Hi there, you are watching a video of pressure vessels in industrial plants. The design conditions of a pressure vessel is the set of parameters and input data necessary for the selection of the materials, the selection of components, calculation of the components and the fabrication process. It is very easy to fall into the error that the design of an equipment without perfectly stated the design conditions. This only leads to rework as far as the design con is concerned and obviously this rework translates into more man hours. Pressure and temperature are just two of the many design constraints that should be taken into account. Some of them are temperature, as in ambient temperature, MDMT, design temperature, pressure, operating, design, MAUP, test pressure, Loading, dead loads, lift loads, cyclic loading, corrosion allowance or liquid level, wind and seismic conditions, a steam out, hydrostatic desk requirements, transportation and lifting conditions. Material selection and pressure vessel design depend on these design conditions. To arrive to an adequate design of a pressure vessel, the different temperatures acting on the system must be evaluated. These temperatures are the minimum temperature, the maximum or design temperature, and the minimum design metal temperature, MDMT. The minimum temperature at which the pressure vessel will operate is a minimum value of the minimum process temperature. This information must be provided by the customer or the process department. And secondly, the minimum temperature of the site. The minimum temperature of the site is determined based on historical data. The maximum temperature, also known as design temperature. Many times, especially for slender columns, we will not have a single design temperature but a gradient. Considering the hottest as the design temperature would be too conservative and could bring too many associated costs. Since there is a temperature gradient between the hottest and the coldest point, it is necessary to assess the affected area and selecting materials and thicknesses accordingly. Minimum design metal temperature is the minimum temperature at which the material is able to resist against brittle fracture. It is a property of the materials and it is evaluated according to section UCS 66 of the code. The difference between the operating temperature TO and the design temperature TD is a safety margin that exists because it is usually difficult to establish design conditions without total certainty. The difference between the operating and design conditions takes into account unwanted excursions during the transients that occur at the startup of a plant. When the design temperature TD is not available, the following can be used as a first approximation. TO plus 10% or TO plus 15 Celsius degrees or 65 Celsius degrees as a minimum. The pressure to which the system must operate is one of the most important design conditions. However, 
it should be remembered that it does not always govern the design of a pressure vessel. There are many other types of loads acting on the vessel. Usually, when we are dealing with pressure, operating, design or test, this value is referring to the gauge or relative pressure, G between parentheses. The difference between the operating BO and design pressure BD is a safety margin. This margin exists because sometimes it is difficult to establish operating conditions with certainty. If we need to design but only the operation, operating conditions are known, a workaround could be as follows. If PO, the operating pressure, is higher than 20 bars, the design pressure is 1.1 uh, times the operating pressure. Alternatively, if the operating pressure is less than 20 bars, the design pressure is going to be the operating pressure plus 2 bars. When determining the internal design pressure P, the hydrostatic column, in other words, the hydrostatic pressure due to the fluid column, must be taken into consideration especially when the liquid level is high, for example, in vertical cylindrical pressure vessels. A vessel must be under external pressure due to many reasons. The most frequent occurs when under operating conditions the equipment gets depressurized or operates under vacuum. At that moment, the atmospheric pressure is acting outside the pressure vessel. The MAUP or maximum allowable working pressure is the maximum continuous working pressure at which the vessel could operate, assuring that the equipment will not deform plastically. The MAUP is not the same as the design pressure. Adopt Adopted thicknesses usually exceed the required thickness by calculation. This excess is what generates the pressure jump up to the MAUP. Hydrostatic test, commonly known as hydraulic test. It is a routine test used when the material thickness of the pressure vessel and allowable stresses are well defined and there are no significant unknown factors in the mechanical aspects of the design. Attention should be paid when the pressure vessel should be installed in a country with regulations more stringent than the ASME code, for example the PED directive for equipment to be installed in the European Union. Loadings or forces are the causes of stresses in pressure vessels. These forces and moments must be isolated, both to determine where they apply in the vessel and when they apply in the process. Loadings may be applied over a large portion of the vessel or over a local area of the vessel. Remember, both general and local loads can produce stresses. These stresses are additive and define the overall state of stress in the vessel or component. Stresses from local loads must be added to stresses from general loadings. These combined stresses are then compared to the allowable stress. Permanent loads are all those loads fixed or attached to the equipment, such as the own weight, internal elements and platforms. Temporary loads caused by thermal expansion in pipelines and by the people and machinery uh, on platforms are 
the ones that are not present at all times during normal operation. For example, for the design of platforms, it is common to adopt a load of 250 kg per square meter for normal operation and a load of 500 kg per square meter for maintenance. For the design of a vessel, a maintenance load of 500 kg per square meter is estimated at the highest platform of the vessel, not in the operating condition but during shutdown. For the case of loads transmitted by pipelines, there are numerous publications that give us the load values in nozzles for general cases. This can be seen on the screen, for example. In most cases, the operating liquid level does not govern the design. Still, and especially for large horizontal vessels, the loads caused by the weight of the liquid during normal operation must be considered. Generally speaking, the normal liquid level, NLL, during operation is considered for calculations. However, and from a conservative point of view, the highest liquid level, HLL, sometimes is considered. Some vessels are subjected to periodic repetitions of mechanical and thermal loads and the resulting stresses during their service life. When a vessel is subjected to repeated loadings that could cause failure by the development of progressive fracture, the vessel is considered to be in cyclic service. Stresses caused by external lockout loads are a major concern to designers of pressure vessels. These loads are mainly imposed by piping thermal growth, support loads, erection loads, etc. Stresses induced by local loads must be combined with stresses produced by sustained or permanent loads. External conditions such as wind and seismic and snow are imposed to the vessel according to the equipment installation site. Ideally, a detailed study of the legislation of the place should be carried out. Misreading these values represent a lot of man-hours rework. <laughs>